Hi, welcome to Math with Mike, where you're asking the question, did that math teacher really have nothing better to do on their Saturday than this? And the answer is, yeah, yeah, I guess. Okay, let's get started. Today we're going to be talking more about fractions, and we're actually going to be talking about what I consider one of the easiest things about fractions, but the concept is a little wonky. Right, so let's get into it. Today we're talking about multiplying fractions. And usually multiplying ends up being a little harder than addition, but weirdly with fractions, it's the opposite. So hold on, we're actually about to do what we wanted to do with adding fractions. Uh, and that can be a little confusing, but let's talk about it. So when we added fractions, right, I'll do an example. We did uh, like one half plus two thirds we had to start thinking about it in terms of changing denominators. Remember, denominator is the lower part of your fraction, and numerator is on top. Yeah. So we had to think about changing our denominators so that they matched. Because if we think about it, it's like adding together pizza slices. The bottom number is telling me how many slices the pizza's cut up in, like how big they are, and the top is expressing to me how many pizza slices I have. And if I want to combine them into the same box, I gotta like cut them up into similar pieces. So to do that in this situation, I would have to multiply to make the denominators the same size. And if you're like, what are you talking about? Don't worry, I go into more detail on this in a different video. You can look that up, it's on my page, enjoy that. Go to that, come back here. It's okay, take your time. So what we'd have to do is we'd have to multiply the denominators together. I would take this three and multiply that by the numerator and the denominator because three over three is just one whole. I got three slices and they're cut up into thirds. It's, it's a whole pizza. So I'd multiply that by one half, and I would take the other fraction, and I'd multiply it by the other denominator. And this will always give me um, the same denominator, because three times two, three times two, that's the same thing. So I'd end up with the fractions three over three times two is six, I can, I can do math, let's go. Two times two is four, and three times two is six. And now that the denominators are the same, I could add them together and get seven sixths. Ho, ho, ho. And you can kind of see by looking at these that you'd have more than one pizza, so seven sixths, that passes my gut check. You should always gut check, always, Tell if you feel comfy with it. And if you're not, go back and look at it. So yeah, that's what we did before. And that felt kind of like a lot of steps. So weirdly enough, we're going to be doing less steps with multiplying. So that's going to be nice. What I wanted to do here is I really wished I could just add across, but I couldn't because I'd be inherently changing the sizes of my slices. And that's no good. But that's literally what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be multiplying straight across. And we'll try and figure out why that works. All right, let's pull it up. Let's take the same maybe fractions and consider those. I'm going to take, what were they again? Let's see if I have that short-term memory. One half, and I'm gonna multiply that by, what did I say, two thirds? Sure, let's do that. So what this is equivalent to is one times two over two times three. And equivalent just means equal to, it even has the word equal in it, equiv, equivalent? Does it kinda? I don't know, I'm dyslexic. Let's pretend it does. Uh, <laughs> that, was, that was terrible. Uh, so I have one times two, which is two, and I have two times three, which is six. My answer ends up being two six, and I have to reduce that. And reducing just means I'm taking the number, right? And I'm trying to write it with smaller numbers because 
that's going, that's nicer to read, right? You should always reduce your fractions because it's nicer to hand someone um, a small number than it is to be like, here's these big numbers, right? Like you'd enjoy that too. So always write it with the smallest numbers possible. And to reduce, we're gonna think about what we can divide both of these things by. I know that I can divide two by two and I can divide six by two. I also know that because they're both even numbers. And if it's an even number, it's always divisible by two. So similarly how I did it to the top and the bottom, I'm gonna do that again. Because two over two is just one. And if I divide anything by one, it's just itself. It's my favorite math trick. Just one divided by anything is itself and anything times one is itself. And we can make up how one looks. It's so neat. So two divided by two is one. Six divided by two is three. Awesome. So my answer would end up being one third. So if you like the hard and fast rule, the hard and fast rule is just multiply those suckers across and then reduce and you'll get your answer, right? I'm just multiplying them like how I wanted to add. And I end up with my fraction in the end. Um, but it's kind of weird, right? Like, why, why would I just multiply across? And the answer with that lies in the nature of multiplication, right? When I'm multiplying something together, um, I'm really looking at a more two-dimensional situation and I'm, I'm, I'm engrossing it. All right, I drew out a situation to possibly help, all right? Because what I'm actually saying here is that I'm taking one half and I want to increase it by an amount of two thirds. But here's the thing, though both of those are less than one. So if I took something and I doubled it, right, I'd be adding on to that thing. I'd be making it bigger. But if I'm increasing something by a smaller than one number, which sounds weird, I'm increasing by less than one, it's actually going to lower the amount. It ends up decreasing it, which is weird. That's a weird concept. But we can kind of think of it as if I have less than one, I'm taking away, right? I have, I'm going to be getting smaller things because I no longer have that whole. Anything times one gives you the whole thing. Anything less than one is going to end up giving you less of that thing. And what's really nice about this one half example is I think we can all start to see it. Because I end up saying, well, if I'm decreasing it then, what is one half of two thirds? If I'm cutting something in half, right, I'm cutting it in two, and I have these two thirds, that means I'm cutting that in half. So I end up with just one of those thirds left over, one third. And it ends up working out that way, which is kind of neat. All right, it's okay if you didn't get that. Uh, like I always say, it's okay if you need to watch this again. It's okay if you need to watch it several times. It's okay if you need to go and find someone else to explain it a little differently than how I just did. Because it's not about getting the first time. It's not about getting it the second time. It's not about getting it the 12th time. It's about not giving up on it. And I know that you can get this. So if I just said words, that's okay. Sometimes when I'm learning things, it just sounds like words to me too. And I have to take more time. And it's okay to learn at your own pace. What we're going to do now is we're going to try some problems together, okay? We're going to multiply fractions together and then reduce if necessary. All right, let's go. Do, 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 do. Erase with my lovely husband. Eraser. <laughs> I don't have many jokes here and they're not good. So settle in for that. All right, let's give this guy a try. Let's do, I don't know, five sevenths times four thirds, because we can. I just made up numbers on the spot. Give this guy a try. Pause the video and come back when you're done. All right, ready? Let's do it. Again, I know that I can just straight up multiply across. And it's going to be the same thing. 
So 5 times 4 is 20. Th 7 times 3 is 21. <laughs> and I like that those ended up being so close together. I just think that's neat. No other reason than that. Now the question becomes, can I reduce 20 over 21? Can I divide them by the same number? And the answer is no, I cannot. I can divide 20 by 4 or 5 or 2 or 1, and I can divide 21 by 1 and 21 and 3 and 7, and that's about it. And notice that the only number I said that overlapped was 1, and if I divide these by 1, well, 20 divided by 1 is 20, and 21 divided by 1 is 21, well, that's just the same darn thing. So I guess that's my final answer. Da da da, 20 over 21. Nice. Let's try another one. Yeah. Why am I making transitional music? Who knows? All right. Let's do um 11 fortieths times one-fifth. Give that guy a try. See what happens. And remember, it's okay to use a calculator. You literally have one in your back pocket. I'm literally filming on one right now. That's wild. So use your resources. All right, got it? Let's go. I'm going to do 11 times 1 because, again, I'm just multiplying straight across. It's nice. It's easy. It's my favorite thing to do with fractions. And I get 11, and then I do 40 times 5. And the way I like to think about this one is what's 4 times 5? Well, that's 20. And then I have an extra 0. You should have gotten 200. All right, now we've got to think. Can I reduce 11 over 200? And I, like I said, I'm making these up on the spot. And fun fact, I, I can't reduce that one either, even though it feels like I should, because 200 feels like I should be able to write it smaller. But here's the thing, 11 is a prime number. And what prime means is I can only divide it by one in itself. And we already talked about dividing by one doesn't really do us anything. And dividing by two, one, uh, I can't divide 200 by 11. I can't. Try it on your calculator. It doesn't work. It doesn't give me a nice whole number. And that's what I'm looking for. It's a nice whole number. Because we're not going to start writing decimals on the bottom of our fractions. We're not, we're not doing it. We don't need that. We don't need it. All right. Let's try another one. I'll try and make this one so, but no, no, we'll see if we have to reduce this one or not. I'll keep it a mystery. All right, let's do 3 over 5 times 10 over 11. All right, give this guy a try. Ready to go? Let's do it. Again, I'm just multiplying straight across. This is my favorite thing ever. 3 times 10, well, that guy's going to be 30. 5 times 11, that is going to be 55. All right, and now I'm going to look at this and go, can I reduce this? Can I divide 30 and 55 by the same number and get a nice whole number at the end? And the answer is yes, I can. What do you think it is? It's going to be 5. I can divide both of these numbers by 5. So let's do it down here. I've got 30 over 55. And I'm going to divide both of them by 5. Boop, boop, boop. Divide by 5. Nice. 30 divided by 5 is going to be 6. And 55 divided by 5 is going to be 11. Awesome. 6 elevenths. And then I want to stop and I want to think... Can I reduce 6 elevenths anymore? Can I divide 6 or 11 by the same thing? And I can't. Again, 11 is prime. If you end up running into a prime number, it's not impossible to reduce by it, but your chances go down a lot. All right? So this one, I can't reduce by it. 
that's my final answer. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful. I'm so proud of you. Have a great day.